For the safety of your smile, use Peptidin twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Peptidin show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. A pip of a day. At 8 o'clock this morning, the doorbell rang, and I opened the door. How do you do? I'm the census taker. Your name? Uh, Jane Stacy. Married or single? Single. Born? At 1925. Thank you. And your name, miss? Irma Peterson. Married or single? Single. Born? Certainly. How do you think I got here? <laughs> well, that's how this morning began. And by the time the poor census taker was through with Irma, she had the book in her hand and she was asking him questions. <laughs> and I was trying to drag her out of the apartment because I knew we'd both be late for work. So I finally succeeded in dragging her to the subway station and here we are. Oh, Irma, what are you doing? I, I want to see what I weigh on this scale. Well, hurry, honey. If we miss this train, we'll be late for work. All right, Jane. Irma, our train is coming in. Will you please get off that scale? I can't. What do you mean you can't? You've already weighed yourself. I know, but on the back of the little card that came out, it says, things are going nicely for you. Don't move from your present position. <laughs> oh, Irma. Don't good morning me, Miss Peterson. The phone's been ringing all morning and I can't find it. Where is it? Oh, the phone. Oh, I put it in the safe because of the letter you got yesterday. You mean that standard form in which they said they'd shut off the phone if we didn't pay the bill? Yes, so I put the telephone in the safe so in case they call up, they can see we have money. <laughs> of all the idiotic, ridiculous... Answer that phone, will you? Yes, sir. It's Judge Randall, Mr. Clyde. Oh, yes, yes. Tell him I'd like to postpone the hearing on the Benson divorce case because the wife is out of town and the complainant is indisposed. Understand? Certainly. Hello, Judge Randall. Well, Mr. Clyde wants you to postpone the case because he's indisposed out of town with your wife. Any complaints? <laughs> Miss Peterson, give me that phone. Hello, Judge. This is Clyde. I'm awfully sorry. You see... Uh, oh, you understand. You've talked to Miss Peterson before. <laughs> Would you mind postponing the Benson case until next week? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Did I say the wrong thing, Mr. Clyde? You did. But it wasn't quite as bad as the first thing you said to me. What do you mean? Well, three years ago, when you first walked into this office, you said a terrible thing. I did? Yes. I said, would you like to work for me, Miss Peterson? And you said yes. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. I was so nervous and I tried so hard to please you. I even went out and got you a sandwich for lunch. Yes. I'll never forget it. I asked you to get a bacon and tomato on rye and you brought it back on rye crisp. <laughs> say rye crisp is good for reducing, and everybody around here told me you were a fathead. <laughs> How dare you? Well, I was only trying to... Never mind, Miss a... Peterson, never mind. Take a letter. All right, I'll, I'll get my notebook. Now don't bother. I'll dictate it to you as you type. Now, get it all down. I don't want to repeat it. Ready? Ready. Uh, Mr. Benjamin, Stewart Restaurant, New York City. Dear sir, in regards to your case now pending before the Court of Appeals... I advise you to accept the offer made by the plaintiff to settle out of court. Yours truly, Milton J. Clyde. All right, Miss Peterson, take it out of the typewriter. I want to sign it and get it in the mail at once. I'm sorry, Mr. Clyde, I typed it, but there's nothing on the paper. What? 
Oh, for goodness sake, Miss Peterson, no wonder there's no ribbon in your typewriter. Why? Well, last night you gave me a lot of packages to send out, and I didn't have any string. <laughs> That's all. Miss Peterson, get your hat and coat. Oh, I can't have lunch with you, Mr. Card. I promised to have lunch with Jane. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, Miss Peterson. You are fired. Fired, do you understand? You are not working here anymore. But I can't leave now, Mr. Clyde. I haven't given you a two weeks' notice. Goodbye, Miss Peterson. <laughs> I, I, I'll mail you your check. Goodbye, Mr. Clyde. Oh, hi, sweetie. I see you're all ready for lunch. Well, let's hurry before the restaurant gets too crowded. Jane, I'm not hungry. I feel so miserable. Why, sweetie, what's wrong? I just got fired. Fired? Oh, sweetie, that's too bad. This is the blackest day of my life. Oh, now take it easy, sweetie. There's no sense in going all to pieces. We have a little money saved, and I've still got my job. Don't get panicky. Oh, Jane, you're the best friend a girl ever had, standing by me when everything goes wrong. You're like that rat that refuses to leave the sinking ship. <laughs> I understand, sweetie. Now dry your tears and we'll have some lunch. No, Jane, I'm not hungry. I, I think I'll buy a paper and go home and see if I can find a job in a help-wanted column. Well, all right, honey. I'll see you later. Gee, I hope Al doesn't find out that I lost my job. It would worry him so. <laughs> uh, now, let me see, uh... Oh, a young lady with thorough knowledge of French, German, Spanish, Italian, and Chinese must be graduate doctor of geology, well-versed in science and economic affairs to travel around the world with the Smithsonian Archaeology Expedition must be ready to sail within a week. Oh, that sounds perfect. Oh, but I can't take it. Boats make me seasick. <laughs> oh, well, there must be something here in the paper. Now, let's see. If... Oh, a linotype operator, comptometer operator, and mill operators. Oh, they won't do. Hospitals depress me. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Oh, well, honey. Chicken, you look kind of blue. Anything wrong? Oh, oh no. Well, what were you reading that made you look so sad? Uh, 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 the funnies. The funnies? Uh, Al, I... I guess I might as well tell now, you. Now, hold it, chicken. Before you tell me, I got some wonderful news for you. Been doing a lot of thinking lately, and today I finally decided. What, Al? Chicken, with the security of a weekly check from the unemployment office, and the fact that you have a steady job, our future looks pretty solid. So I have decided to look around for a little house, because now it looks like you and I will never be broke. No, Al, you can't. <laughs> chicken... What are you crying for? Don't you want to marry me and be the envy of all your friends? Of course I do, Al. Well, then why all the bawling? Well, well these are tears of joy. Oh, I'm so happy. Didn't think you'd get carried away like this. Maybe I'm a better catch than I thought I was. Now, what's your news, chicken? Oh, nothing, Al. It's Really not important. Didn't think it would be. Tell me, chicken, how's tricks? How's your job? My job? Uh, fine, fine. My working hours have been reduced, and what with vacations and holidays, I hardly feel I'm working at all. Chicken, you really rate with your boss, don't you? That guy would probably be lost without you. Hey, that gives me an idea. Think I will go down there and tell him we're getting married, and maybe he'll give you a raise. You know, it never hurts to throw in a few hints personally. Oh, no, Al, you can't do that. Why not, chicken? Well, I'm his secretary, and I'm the only one he gets personal with. Uh... <laughs> so... Okay, chicken, it's your job, and I'm not going to tell you how to hold it down. But don't think that you're going to be carrying the ball by yourself when we get married. And working on a deal that will set the world on fire. Well, what is it, Al? See, today, the problem in television is that the husband wants to watch the wrestling matches, but the wife wants to watch the fashion show. So I'm trying to sell a program in which gorgeous George will wrestle Hattie Carnegie. <laughs> yeah, Al, you've got so many wonderful ideas. Why, sure, chicken. Hey, how about going out with me and looking for a little spot to live in? Oh, no, Al, I, I have a headache. You go without me. All right, chicken. 
And don't forget what I told you about hitting Clyde for that raise. See you later. <laughs> My dearie, I just seen your boyfriend. What did he do to make you cry, honey? Slug you? <laughs> you know, Amber, I deceived him. Why can't I be like other women and at least wait until after we're married? I don't understand you, Amber. Amber, I got fired. Ah, them bosses make me sick. The ones you can't stand are always making passes at you, and the ones you got a yen for won't even let you in their office. Well, what do you mean you deceived Al? I told him I'm still working. So what if you did deceive him? A woman has to do that once in a while to hold on to a man. Take my new boyfriend, Seymour. I told him I spent four years in Vassar. But, Amber, aren't you afraid he'll find out? Well, I can always tell him I spent so much time in this country that I lost the accent. <laughs> Fish. When you get him on your line, you gotta play them a little. After you get him in the boat, you can hit him on the head. <laughs> oh, but Amber, if Al finds out I don't have a job, he won't go through with the plans he has to marry me. Oh. Well, dearie, that puts a different light on things. Have you looked for another job? Yes, I've read the want ads, but I can't find anything. Then one answer, no good, dearie. I've answered dozens of them that fitted me to a T. You know, the kind that reads, cultured, attractive young lady wanted. Then as soon as they see me, they say the job's already been filled. <laughs> Believe me, dearie, them's the times you want to forget your culture and kick them right in the face. <laughs> but Amber, I simply must have a job. You got nothing to worry about, dearie. I know an employment agency that's just a thing. They have a wonderful system. They take your sight unseen. What do you mean? Well, everybody that's looking for a job gets a number. And every employer who's looking for help gets a number, too. That's so there won't be any prejudice. And then they arrange the interview. Gee, that sounds wonderful. Oh, you bet it is. I wouldn't be working today if the guy that hired me knew what he was getting. <laughs> Come on, Irma. I'll take you down there right now and register you. All right, and thanks, Amber. You're a regular lifesaver. Uh, not the kind you eat, the kind you throw in the river. Good news, big money-saving news about the wonderful film-removing Pepsodent, an amazingly improved film-fighting formula for brightening teeth and cleaning breath. And you get it now at a sensational introductory bargain. Listen. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. Yes, two 25-cent tubes in a special twin pack, regular price 50 cents, now only 33 cents. You save 17 cents. Yes, penny for penny, ounce for ounce, new Pepsodent gives you more for your money than any other leading toothpaste. And more in results, too, for no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's new film-removing formula. It foams wonderfully, goes to work faster removing film, makes your teeth brighter and your breath cleaner. So act now. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. More for your money than any other leading toothpaste today. Cheer up, sister, and you too, mister. Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The taste for you. out of a job. She doesn't mind so much for herself. She's worried about Al finding out. However, she still has hope. You see, her girlfriend, if you'll excuse the expression, Amber Lipscott, took her to the secretarial employment agency, and they have changed her name to a number. 
Irma Peterson is now number 64. And you know it's made her a little proud? You see, that's two points higher than any mark she ever got in school. <laughs> right now, Irma is writing her first letter to the agency, where it will be forwarded to some prospective employer. Dear whoever you are, I am an unemployed girl who is not working. <laughs> if you are looking for an efficient, capable, expert secretary, you need me because when she's busy, I'll be there to answer the phone. <laughs> No, Irma. What's wrong? Well, your approach is okay, but you made a bad landing. Here, let me help you, sweetie. All right, Jane. Uh, uh, dear sir, I am a capable secretary with several years' experience with a law firm. I am uh, reliable, trustworthy, and efficient. Now, sign it. All right. Faithfully yours, 64. <laughs> P.S., don't let the 64 fool you. I really weigh 118. <laughs> no, Irma, just sign it. Sincerely, number 64. All right, Jane. I'll mail it right away. And if I get the job, believe me, I'm not going to make the same mistake I made with Mr. Clyde. Well, what do you mean, honey? Well, when my new boss tells me to take a letter, he won't be able to blame me if it's wrong because I'm going to tell him to put it in writing. <laughs> Girls. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Irma, darling, this letter just came for you. I didn't mean to snoop, but it says secretarial agency on the envelope. Oh, it's here. Irma, dearie, I didn't know you were looking for a job. Did Mr. Clyde fire you? Uh, well, uh, uh, Irma quit, but it, uh, it's only temporary. Well, you girls don't have to worry about me. You know, I love you like my own two daughters. So I won't do anything drastic for a week. <laughs> That's sweet. Uh, go on, Irma. Read the letter from the agency. I'm dying of curiosity. All right. Uh, uh, my dear Miss 64, in answer to your letter, I'm interested in a girl of your ability, and I would like more details. Please reply by return mail, signed 66. Oh, Jane, that's a terrible number. What do you mean, terrible? Well, if he stands on his head, I won't recognize him. <laughs> I'll think he's 99. Well, don't let it worry you, honey. He won't start standing on his head until after you've worked for him for a while. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma and Mrs. O'Reilly. My three little fruits. Janie, you are like a Georgia peach. Why, thank you, Professor. And Irma, you are like a sunky starring. Thank you, Professor. And Mrs. O'Reilly. Yes, Professor. <laughs> you old prune face, you. Oh, look here, you miserable old hound Oh, no, not again. Can't you two ever look at each other without snapping each other's heads off? But Horace would make an improvement. <laughs> oh, shut up, Professor. T tell me, Irma, did you get the job yet? Well, I almost have a job. All I have to do is write him another letter. Wonderful. What's his name? He doesn't have a name, just a number. Irma, a convict. Go back to Al. At least he wasn't caught yet. <laughs> no, 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 Professor. Irma's been corresponding with an employment agency, and everyone has a number. Oh, what a wonderful system. Imagine meeting a man just by using a number. <laughs> I've got a good mind to try it myself. You with the number would be like license plates on a truck. Oh. <laughs> Please don't fight. I I've got to try and concentrate on answering this letter. I've got to make sure I get a job because Al and I have plans. I'm sorry, Irma. Tell me, does Al know yet that you lost your job with Mr. Clyde? Oh. And I hope everyone will keep it a secret. You see, uh, he says we can get married now, and if he finds out I'm not working, he'll call it off. Oh, that's Al. The kind of a guy girls dream about and then wake up screaming. <laughs> Irma, you'd better get that letter started to the agency. Well, personally, I wouldn't give you a nickel for all the agencies in the world. But, Professor, you have to do something when you're in a hole. Yeah, this is what I thought when I applied to the agency, and what happened? They put me in a worse hole. You see, it was through an agency that I got my room. <laughs> Well, you girls have your own troubles. Come on, Miss O'Reilly. I'll take you to see a new picture called The City Across the River. Why, Professor? 
Professor, that's sweet of you. But I know it is. They're liable to think I'm coming in with a tugboat. <laughs> Look, sweetie, I finished writing that letter for you. I've got to run out for a few minutes, so you sign it and mail it right away. Oh, thanks, Jane. I'll take care of it right away. Hello? Oh, hello, Al. Where are you? Huh? Oh, you found an apartment? Well, where is it, Al? Between a cleaning and dying place? What do you mean, between? Oh, on one side is a laundry and the other side is an undertaker. <laughs> well, I'll think it over, Al. Goodbye. Come in. Hello, Emma, dearie. Oh, hello, Amber. It worked. Oh, then you heard from the agency. Yes, I'm number 64, and I'm sending this letter to number 66. Well, let me see what you wrote, dearie. <laughs> Dear number 66, I am a capable person. <laughs> Oh, Emma, this is crazy. How come you write such a high-class letter? The guy will think you don't need work. Oh, I didn't write it. Jane did. I might have known Miss Snooty had something to do with it. Amber, what are you doing with my letter? Take it easy, dearie. I'll dictate a letter that'll knock him dead. Take this down, Emma. You all set? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Dear number 66, I am just the girl you need. Because after working for my last boss, I can work for anybody. He was a slave driver, an old grouch, and last but not least, a crumb. <laughs> you got that down, Emma? Yes, it's all down. Uh, wait, I'll, I'll sign it. Good. Now, come on, dearie. We can drop it right off at the agency. You get quicker action that way. Amber, do you think we did the right thing saying those things about Mr. Clyde? Don't worry about it, Emma. He's probably saying worse than that about you. Oh, Amber, what could he say about me? Of all the inefficient, stupid blunderers that ever called herself a secretary, that Peterson girl took the cake. Look here, Milton J. Clyde. I did not marry you just so I could knock myself out in your office. If you had any sense, you would have held on to Miss Peterson until you found out where she hid everything. But Phoebe, darling... Don't you, Phoebe, darling, me. Get on that phone and see if that agency can get some action. Yes, Pigeon. Hello, secretarial agency? This is number 66. <laughs> has anything come in from number 64? It has... The boy is on his way over here with it now. Well, thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, it won't be long now, honey bunch. Good. And this time, pay her more than you paid the last girl, and maybe you'll have better luck. Oh, I've already set the salary with the agency. It's $10 a week more than I was paying Miss Peterson. Mr. Clyde? Yes, oh, the letter. letter. Here you are, sir. Oh, thanks. Dear number 66, I'm just the girl you need because last boss slave driver... Grouch? Crump? Uh, well, this is an unusual letter. Phoebe, I like this girl. She sounds frank and honest. What she probably needs is an understanding employer like myself. I'm going to arrange for an interview at once. Oh, oh, gee, I'm so nervous. Won't you come in with me? No, sweetie. The man wants to talk to you. There's nothing I can do. It's all up to you and number 66. Good luck, honey. I'll wait out here for you. All right, Jane. Oh, Mr. Clyde, fancy meeting you here. Are you looking for work, too? No, Miss Peterson. I'm here to engage my new secretary, and I'm sure whoever she is will be a vast improvement over my last one. You. Well, you're no bargain either, Mr. Clyde. Can I help you folks? Oh, well, I see you're both on time. Number 66, I'd like to have you meet number 64. What? Oh, dear, I guess my number's up. Oh, no. No, no! Don't miss the sensational bargain introducing new film-removing Pepsodent toothpaste. Get two 25-cent tubes of new Pepsodent for only 33 cents. You save 17 cents. Yes, two 25-cent tubes in a special twin pack 
Regular price, 50 cents, only 33 cents. Penny for penny, ounce for ounce, new Pepsodent gives you more than any other leading toothpaste. More in results, too. No other toothpaste can duplicate new Pepsodent film-removing formula. It foams amazingly. Goes to work faster removing film, making teeth brighter, breath cleaner. Hurry. Offer limited. Get two 25-cent tubes of new film-removing Pepsodent for only 33 cents. because Mr. Clyde was helplessly trapped. As for Al marrying her, well, I'll be very happy to attend the wedding, and so will my grandchildren. But let her have her little dream. I wouldn't hurt her for the world. Sweetie? Yes, Jane? Have you found an apartment yet? No. All we've seen is a little place in the country. Al says it's a rambling cottage. Well, what's wrong with a rambling cottage? It might be all right now, but who knows where it'll be next week. <laughs> and you know, no matter how much the cottage rambles, it'll never wander like the mind of my friend Irma. <laughs> Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Ladies, make your next permanent a rave home permanent. This new personalized home permanent from the famous Pepsodent Laboratories eliminates all guesswork. With rave, and only with rave, you get the easy-to-use dial-a-wave chart that gives you the one right wave for your kind of hair. Rave waving times are up to twice as fast as ordinary home permanent. Yet a rave wave is gentler, long-lasting, more natural-looking from the very first day. The complete rave kit is $2. Rave refill kit, $1. Both kits contain the easy-to-use dial-a-wave chart. Dial your rave number for a personalized home permanent. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater followed by the Pepsodent and Joe, My Friend Irma, both brought to you by Lever Brothers Company. When you contribute to the 1949 Red Cross Fund, you are not just giving to the Red Cross. You are giving through the Red Cross to the American people. Yes, the American Red Cross is a partnership of the people of America. So give and give generously to your Red Cross. Wendell Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>